Humidity is the thing I hate most about the 8th Ward. Sandwiched between the Ohio River and Lake Erie means an awful lot of water runs by Hyper City, too. But for whatever reason, the 8th Ward remains the most humid. At least in my opinion. My short time spent in the 12th Ward of HC2 often saw a 90 to 100% humidity index, but it just didn't seem as oppressive. I was working mornings then. We all know it's hotter in daylight. But for whatever reason, though, mids with its 70-80% index and slightly cooler in temps is just far more oppressive. It's like living in the stinking belly of a whale or crocodile. Always. Dark. Sticky. Unpleasant. Next time I pass the outgoing noons and hear another complaint about the heat, I'm going to choke the clown out. This night is no different. If anything, it's the worst ever. A fresh rain has left the fine film of swampy air lingering in the back of my throat. And I'm sure it's there in Rin's, too. Combine that with the stink of this bloated corpse we both had the unfortunate luck of getting called out to, and it's just looking to be a weekend to remember. I reached the back of my helmet and cranked the fan settings to high. It doesn't help all that much. Maybe it takes the edge off. Maybe. The tenant that found the stiff is droning on and on still. I stopped listening the moment she opened her mouth. Rin's better with people than me. I can't see her face behind her helmet's face shield. Polarization on the outside allows an agent to hide their emotions from the tenant's intimidation tactics that have their deep roots in corpse-set culture as old as dirt. Never let a tenant know how you feel. You're the face of a corporate policy enforcement agent, and corporate policy is sterile and free of emotion. So that's it. The tenant female, or feminine, as we call them, finishes her monotone tale. You'd think the woman would be more emotional about finding a body in this stinking canal, but considering we were on the border of the third and fourth authorities, corpses weren't in short of supply. Just so happens this body washed up on the east side of the canal, and that makes it a fourth authority case. Rin looks over at me, then back at the feminine. Thank you, tenant. Are you aware you're overdue on two months' rent? The feminine's face goes pale, and she immediately does an about-face into a full-on sprint. Rins as fast as ever. Her bailiff magnum is drawn in a flash and barks. I feel the heat of the concussion and shot wash over my crouched form. The woman's torso explodes, and the 75 caliber explosive tip bullet ignites an impact. She's strawberry jam and pulp only four yards away. Pay your bills, people. Seriously. Especially if you plan on calling your local corp sec. Unpaid rent is a capital infraction after the first time you fail to pay on time. Second infraction, I ask, looking back at the waterlogged body in front of me. The stench is not unfamiliar to me, but let's be honest, it never gets easier. There you go, Sally, asking stupid questions again. Rin responds putting her bailiff back into the drop of the holster on her right thigh. My eye rests on it for a moment. God damn, is she beautiful, even in the red golem armor of her investigation department uniform. Woman is a goddess amongst mortals. Comes with a territory, rookie. <laughs> I laugh, looking back at the body again. Now, with that infraction settled, mind focusing on the area of expertise... Rin folds her arms. There I went and made the kid angry. Well, tough shit, Rin. You're working for the collections department of the third authority anymore. You are fourth authority investigations now, and technically still green. Oh, sure, you've killed hundreds of debtor scum, but that's easy work. You wanted to become a proper agent. And now I'm your senior. Suck it up, beautiful. Now, what did I tell you about calling me Sally? It's just Sal. I point to the body. Report your findings, junior agent. Rin pauses only for a moment to look at the corpse. No facial data on file. Very suspect. The tenant was either high on the corp manager chain or someone wanted to keep us guessing. 
My armor's Geiger counter spikes for just a moment, and that means she used her onboard x-ray scanner. Teeth were removed, fingertips are burned off, so that leaves us with DNA samples for ID. Yep, and that means we'll have to wait months for results. You're forgetting one thing, rookie. I waggle a finger at her. Ocular data. If the stiff is a corp drone or manager, we should find out who he is immediately, she replies. You get the honors then. I'm going to go back to the bear and check in. I stand and step over the body. I don't wait to watch or scan the dead man's eyes. Why get my hands dirty when I've got a trainee tagging along? It's a few short meters walk to the armored Bearcat cruiser, right where we left the hulking beast of a vehicle. I open the driver's door and climb in. The onboard computer flashes yellow at me. I tap the screen and see the familiar fat face of our dispatcher, Hogan. He doesn't seem very happy. You're 30 seconds late on your check-in. This better be good. Hogan growls. Ease up, Hog. Rookie bagged her a debtor. Old habits die hard. <laughs> I chuckle, shrinking the window of his video feed to check on any text message that may have been left. Look, punctuality is paramount. You need to instill that in Rin. Oh, stow it, Hog. You know a rushed investigation leads to loose ends. Punctuality is only useful to the oversight managers and their paperwork. Corp bureaucracy has no place in corp security work. Hogan just shakes his head and leans back in his chair, grabs a bottle of coke from his desk and takes his swig. Report, he drones after he swallows, then adds, please. Female tenant, the now dead debtor, Kiri Tolstoy noticed an unpleasant smell coming from the Memorial Canal and found an as-of-yet unidentified male. The male appears to be of early middle age, white skin, brown eyes, brown hair, 5 foot 11 inches tall, found nude, fingertips burned off to prevent print ID, and teeth removed to prevent dental ID. Facial recognition showed zero matches in tenant and corporate databases. More than likely hacked and erased. Agent Rin is performing an ocular ID as we speak. Nothing else to report at this time. Thank you, Hogan replies. His overweight frame shifts in his seat as he contemplates the details. Unless the ocular data tags him as someone of import, then probably some smuggler who pissed off his buddies or a gang, and they wiped his face data along with everything else to keep us off the trail. All hinges on the ocular. Just then, the passenger door swings open and Rin pulls herself into the Bearcat. She tosses a standard evidence collection tote into the back of the vehicle and settles into her seat. So? I ask Rin. And Hogan looks at her expectantly. His ginger brow furrows in annoyance. Why are you such a dick, Hog? Black coat, she replies, then pops off her helmet. Her coffee-skinned face and short bleached white bob freed to the still humid air. Even in the bear, the stinking humidity remains. I see the sweat on her skin. Good thing my helmet is still on because I inadvertently lick my lips. What? Hogan yelps and looks like he's about to have a heart attack. The black code means that this dead man was either a low-tier exec or a high-tier exec's family member. He's up, Hog, Rin says. The black code would have applied to a facial scan as well if it was a gold code or a silver code that would have explained the lack of facial recog data. Ah, fuck me. I moan and I remove my own helmet. I catch my reflection on the side mirror of the bear. My close-cropped black hair is slick with sweat, my paper-white pale skin speaking to ears of nocturnal hours, and my yellow eyes look back into themselves for just a moment. Great. So no name without decryption. It is a big gym code. I can tell that much. She pulls the memory card from her helmet and shoves it into the computer. I see the code pop up in a window. Sure enough. It's got the Telltale 5783 starting numbers of any St. James Medical Services employee code. Our mother corp, St. James Medical. Or Big Jim. 
to most on the streets. The company that pays our salaries. This dead man is one of our own. I've sent it along to HR for decryption, Hogan said, fat fingers typing away on his keyboard. Keller, we can grab a ten. I say, just as Hogan hears that, mentioned, he goes beat red. I cut the call before he could start moaning. Ouch. Hog ain't gonna like that, Sally. Rin laughs. Tough. I'm hungry, I say, as I turn the bear on and pull into traffic. Don't call me Sally, it's Sal. Also, I'm thinking Colonel, what about you? I want a burrito, Rin says, reaching back to the evidence tote and looks inside, pulling out some printouts of photo stills from her helmet cam of the scene. I tagged the body for collection. There's a combo joint down the road a bit. I pass a Tesla that's going a bit slower than posted speeds. I smile, knowing the automated road sensors will have fined the driver already. A few minutes later, and I pull into the line for the combo restaurant. A concrete box covered in ads and posters for the latest limited-time dishes. The four signs of the incorporated menus of the combo joint adorn the roof. KFC, Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, and Long John Silver's. All nestled inside an automated drive through only dispensary of fast foods. A single metal door is the only entrance inside the miniature factory, hidden behind a holographic billboard, and it was there for technicians only. As I pull up to the lead of the ordering line, a touchscreen shoves itself up to the my window. You wanted a burrito, right? I asked Rin as I tap the Taco Bell icon and the four items on the menu pop up. Burrito Supreme, two Supreme Tacos, Crunchwrap Supreme, and two Chalupa Supremes. The four Supremes. The limited time items button dances on the bottom left of the screen. It wears a sombrero and dances to mariachi music. The display of the bright color and sound offers much more variety than the base menu and will send you down a rabbit hole of fast food fads. Yeah, burrito, and I want a fina. I tap the burrito icon and then tap the drink menu. And at the center top of the screen, I tap an icon for the Aquafina bottle, or Fina as Rin and many others on the street call it. I tap the main menu button in the face of Colonel Sanders to bring up the KFC menu. Four items pop onto the screen. 12-piece bucket, drum and thigh, wing and breast, and the famous bowl. Again, the limited time items button jigs around at the bottom left corner. This one cartoon of Colonel Sanders cutting a rug to some generic bluegrass jig. I tap it, hear a chicken cluck excitedly, and I'm assaulted with a massive menu of the latest in fast food fattery. I select the rum batter popcorn chicken, thankful that it's still in circulation. A cartoon of the colonel pops up, dressed in pirate garb, and gives a thumbs up. A speech balloon tells me, excellent choice, matey. I smile. I always loved pirates as a kid. Anything piratical always brightens my day, no matter how benign or ham-fisted. I let the screen scan my index finger for payment. There's four cars between us and the pickup chute. Takes all of 30 seconds for each car to have their order practically fired into the open driver's side window. The Golden Arches can do it in 20. Of course, if you don't want a Big Mac or a 10-piece chicken nugget, uh, the House of McDonald is legally allowed to shoot you for wasting company time. No joke. They don't play the food fad game either. You have two choices of food and a drink menu. Many a hophead has been incinerated by McDonald's security drones for forgetting court policy on their drive throughs Don't do drugs, kids. I catch the order bag as it's jettisoned out of the chute. I hand the bag to Rin and hit the auto-drive button on the steering column. Our bearcat takes over its own operation, heading back into the campus since I had no target address entered into the GPS. Me and Rin tuck in. It's not half bad. Well, for synthetically engineered ingredients mashed together and in some semblance of sustenance at least. The alternative was the same synthetic ingredients mashed together in an affront to all things natural in the hospital cafeteria back on campus, and to hell with that. Hospital food somehow still sucked, despite being no different than anything else edible on the market. 
I shove the finished meal's remnants back into the bag. Rin does the same and tosses the sack back into the rear of our bear. I take a drink from my draft bottle. Relax. I keep water in it. Rin finishes her fina and starts to spin the glass bottle on her index finger. With no new calls and nowhere else to be, we both set into habits created to pass the time in this profession of fire and ice. I recline in the driver's seat and shut my eyes. Sleep is something I don't miss out on, work or no work. So who do you think the black coat is? Rin asks, breaking the silence. I ignore her. No use in speculation. Objective truth was all we deal in. Still, because she asks the question, I know in my gut that she's a natural-born detective. A word that doesn't get used much anymore. I can't shake it, but I have a feeling it's a false code. This makes me open my eyes. Why the hell do you think that? No one, and I mean no one, has hacked Ocular Inc.'s databases. That is the stuff of streams. I chuckle. Facial data isn't monopolized, and it's old tech, easily hackable, and often manipulated. Ocular data, though, well, is Ocular's sole purpose. It's the most secure data on the market. It's also why only corp higher-ups get that data registered. Most tenants on the street don't register an Oculus scan because it's just too expensive. Rin pounds. An expression that shouldn't belong in such a pretty face. I shake my head. Relax, kid. I'm just trying to ground you here. Investigators and corpse sec are nothing like in the streams. Yeah, yeah, I heard this before. I just feel it. Something is off about that ocular code. I mean, sure, it's one of our codes, but it didn't seem right. She looks away, eyes front back onto the streets, and resumes spinning the Fina bottle on her finger. Just then, the screen flashes yellow. Hogan is calling us back. Ren taps the screen. I just lay there. We got a problem. The code is fake. Hogan says as he pops up, and he's sweating. He looks terrified. My sudden rise from prone makes me lightheaded for just a moment. Pog called it, Rin squeals, and dances in her seat. However, the reality of the situation hasn't hit her. She's just happy to be right about something for once. Hog, you're kidding, I say into the screen, wide-eyed and still in disbelief. This just didn't happen. Ocular data wasn't ever faked, or hacked, or wrong. Never. As usual, though, I had to act the smartass, and then a ping later, I'm eating my own foot. Do I look like I'm kidding? He slams his fat fist onto his desk. This is unprecedented. It uproots the status quo. A steely voice interrupts, just as another party enters the video call. I know that voice from anywhere. It's the commander of the 4th Authority of the St. James Medical Security Force, Authority General Gail Williams. They don't look happy, but then again, whenever does an asexual non-binary look happy? They have put in an awful lot of work to look as neutral as possible, neither feminine nor masculine. Tan skin, gray hair, gray eyes, and not much else of note to speak of aside from being rail thin to the point of looking like an insect. They tilt their head. This investigation is now top priority. We've already collected the body of our still, as of yet, unknown dead man. However, the fact alone that he has a faked ocular account makes this not just of the highest importance to St. James Medical Services Limited, but to that of Ocular Incorporated. This will result in a joint effort between both corporations' security forces. Investigations Officer Sal Creel do you feel your junior officer is up to the task at hand? Don't hesitate, Sal. Just answer them. Yes, General, I feel she is capable. Plus, a joint task force assignment will be good training. It can be more common than usual in our department's dealings. She ought to learn how to work with other corpsec. Very good. Dispatcher Hogan Lyle. Yes, General. He barks the question. Poor Hog ain't used to dealing with suits so high up. 
That's only because I've only been on my best behavior these past few years, Hog. Did Frankie not warn you about me when she left? No. I suppose she wouldn't have. I'll be putting you in touch with Ocular Dispatch in a moment. They will fill you in on further details and when to expect their investigators to arrive. Call me directly with that ETA. Hogan's video feed dies suddenly, but the general remains on screen. They relax, if only slightly. Actually, I'm not really sure relaxing is the right word. Sal, I prefer this done right. However, with this much lack of fact in the air, I suppose it couldn't have been dispatched to a better officer. We're in the dark, so I'm giving you the green light to go rogue. Please be smart about this, though. We can't afford a media corp getting wind of this. No loose ends are we clear. I blink. It's not every day your CEO tells you to go off the reservation. I mean, I've done it before, but never, ever with a higher-up's blessing. Um, I assume this comes from someone higher than yourself, Skipper. I raise an eyebrow. Policy 3839 is now applicable, Sal. Get this done before Oculus people get here from Hypercity 1 on the Amazonian River District. Is there anything you require? They raise an eyebrow of their own. Well, I'm going to need some guys. 